I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When I was in elementary school and our class couldn't go outside for recess because of stormy weather, pretty much days like today, we would sometimes play a game called 7-Up. The game was very simple and a great way to pass the time in an era as yet innocent to the time-warping insistence of cell phones and other electronic devices. To begin, a few students would volunteer to be it, and then they would call out to all the rest of the class, heads down, thumbs up, now it's time to play 7-Up. Give you a little visual of what it looked like. That's if you were in your desk still. Everyone in the class put their heads down in their folded arms on their desk, closing their eyes and making sure that they couldn't see their classmates who were it roaming through the desks. I mean, I guess you could cheat if you wanted to, but that was not really the fun part of the game. Those who were it would then touch the outstretched thumb of one of those who had their heads down and their eyes closed and then once seven people's thumbs had been touched, everyone picked their heads up and tried to guess who had touched their thumb. A right guess allowed the one who was previously heads down to then be it, while a wrong guess meant another round of keeping one's head buried and one's eyes closed. 7-Up was a great way to deal with anxious kids on rainy days. And guessing right and being able to go through the classroom with one's head up and with full use of one's eyes was a special joy. Being it allowed one to move freely while everyone else was stuck with their heads down in their desks. And it also allowed a good leader to search out and touch those who weren't always chosen first. I thought about this simple game this week as I reflected on our gospel reading for today. We begin the new church year and the season of Advent, not within the grandeur of the Christmas that's coming or with the resounding trumpets of Easter, but rather in the dark uncertainty of apocalypse. I must admit, there have been some years where I've come to the ominous Advent readings and felt them clashing with my current reality. Years in which the distress, fear, and foreboding that Jesus mentions seem quite distant to our lived experience. But not this year. As we come to the end of 2021, Jesus' words feel more descriptive than predictive this year, more present and less future-oriented. Distress among nations? Signs in the sun, moon, and stars? People fainting from fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world? Sounds like the daily news. Every day, we are bombarded with wars and rumors of wars. Every day, we see our earth on fire, pounded by torrential storms and racked by drought and famine. Every day, the heavy shroud 
of fear and distrust descends upon us in print, broadcast, and social media every single day. And that's just in addition to today's news about the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Sometimes it feels like 2020 and 2021 are just piling on. It can, be diff it can be tempting, very, very tempting, to just run away from all of this difficulty, to head for the hills and to find refuge in distractions while shielding our eyes from what is actually happening. While the powers of the heavens are shaken and while our own inner worlds and relationships wrestle with instability. While the storms of this life blow and batter us, we might be tempted to simply shut our eyes, to wail, and to deny any agency we might have to help right the ship. But if this new season of Advent can teach us anything, it is that fleeing, forsaking our agency, or putting our heads down and closing our eyes in the face of difficulty and disaster, that is not Jesus' way. Heads down, thumbs up makes for a great game of 7-Up, but it does not work as a life approach for a faithful follower of Christ. Instead, we are called to see the storms and the fear and the hardship that face us as opportunities to witness the inbreaking of God's kingdom. We are called to keep our heads up and open our eyes to the reality that God is with us in the midst of such trials, such challenges, and such storms. God is with us and calling us to get up and to face the foreboding news and events of our days with a heart full of faith and the strength and the resilience that only come from an unabashed reliance upon the Spirit of God for our guidance. We Christians are called to be truth-tellers, but we are not called to be doom-sayers. We are called to be doom Facers, and to work together in order to turn the dark headlines of our day into the glad tidings that we know through the Gospels. To stay alert and to be constantly on the lookout for the marks of God's kingdom breaking through and heralding a new world. Breaking through like fresh fig leaves that announce summer's arrival. The way, the way that we learn how to stay alert is by practicing being awake and practicing being on the lookout for God. In both the beautiful and precious moments of this life, epitomized for me by our Thanksgiving celebration on Wednesday, in those moments, but also in the difficult and dark valleys as well, when the sirens run back and forth on Via Nazionale with no end. We call this practice prayer. And the reason that we gather here for worship each Sunday is to reflect on Scripture together 
and to remember God's ways. We gather here to be fed for the journey of deepening awareness in Christ. And maybe most importantly during this time, to support one another as we seek to embrace practices and tactics that run counter to the ones that our world so often teaches. And then we go from here and we spend our weeks carrying the gifts and the sacraments of our communal worship into the world so that those who are not within these walls or who are not joining us in our streaming video, so that all of them may know some of the hope that we encounter here, so that they may find courage to keep their heads up too. To let fear and foreboding give way to faith. A faith which leads to the kind of bravery that it takes to act in common for the good of others. I encourage you to give renewed attention to your prayer lives throughout this Advent season, my dear friends. To take time each day and throughout each day to step away from the storms and with God's help to learn to see them as clearly as you are able. That's the whole idea behind Advent calendars and the like, to keep us daily engaged daily aware. I encourage you to lean on the gift of Holy Scripture and to read it in such a way as to allow it to speak to you as you go throughout your day. If you're wondering where to start reading, if you're doing this on your own, I'd suggest making your way slowly this season through the Gospel of Luke as we will be exploring it more throughout the weeks, months, and the church year ahead. If you're hungry to feel more connected to community and to the whole story of Scripture, I encourage you to follow the link on our website to meet us online for morning prayer, Monday through Thursdays at 9 a.m. Most of all, keep your heads up and your hearts open this season, even though that doing so will be hard and most certainly extremely countercultural. For when we stand up and raise our heads, we will indeed see the storms for what they are, and we will be challenged to confront them. But we will also see that God's kingdom arises within those storms, rather than merely just from outside of them. And in so arriving, God's kingdom is able to transform them. That is the fruit and the sign of our redemption drawing near. The subtle yet insistent transformation of our world. And what a gift, what a gift it is to see it coming. What a gift it is to keep our heads up and searching for it. What a gift it is.
to serve as midwives for its delivery into a fearful and hurting world. Amen.